Hello there, this is Brian, and here is Maverick, and welcome to another one of our Outdoor Adventures. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. In today's hiking adventure, we're going to be hiking along the Red Trail in Green Lane Park, which is located in Upper Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. So before we get started, let's go ahead and click that like button and subscribe for future content if you haven't already. So Maverick and I have been hiking this park for some time. Uh, we usually do a loop trail. Today we're just going to do one section of the red trail, which is of the two. This is probably the easier of the two. It's more flat, but there's definitely a lot to see. If you do come on this hike, just be aware that there is a lot of sunshine. So make sure you bring your sunscreen, whether you're coming. Well, obviously, if you're coming in the summer and you're wearing short sleeves or shorts. Uh, winter time, you're probably covered up, so don't have to worry as much about the sun. This is a really beautiful park, and uh, really do enjoy coming here. I prefer to start on the, I guess it's the northwest end, which you can see here, it starts out along this bridge. If you head, uh, I guess it would be clockwise along the loop. It takes you out across this really beautiful bridge that cuts over the reservoir. And there are fishing piers throughout, so if you are a fisherman, this is a really nice kind of place to come as well too, as you can see. Surprised there's no fishermen out yet today. Usually every time I come through, there's somebody out here enjoying it. And as you can see, there are kayakers out there as well. Just beautiful. So we're reaching the end of the so we're reaching the end of the bridge here and this is going to tear off into the trail now let's take it back back here you can see that's where we started at on that bridge over there on the other side we made our way through here it is just really peaceful out here now if you decide to go to the blue trail instead. The blue trail will start out, if you can see over there, the bridge, and it'll follow up and down that ridge. And it'll cut back in. I don't know if you can see, but there's a cut over over there that'll loop back around. And you're basically following the outskirts of the reservoir. Um, this is definitely the harder of the two trails. As I mentioned, this one's more flat. Uh, this is actually good for biking. Um, if you're just into light biking, I want to say there's on this side, they also uh, allow horseback riding as well, too. At least on portions of it, I've seen horses here. So keep that in mind. And as I mentioned, what we do is we, you come up here on the red trail. And these actually, another good thing about this hike is that the trail markers are really well marked. They do a good job of labeling the different trails. So on the red trail, you're gonna see red markers all up and down. This trail can get a little busy at times, depending when you're here, what time of day. 
But the trail itself is not too bad as far as uh, people being on it. The park, the park in itself is beautiful. The park gets overloaded. So just keep that in mind. Certain this time, probably today, it'll be packed more than likely. So. What we have here the Borneman Family Cemetery circa 1729. Resting in the place of Daniel Borman, a 1721 of settler of the Upper Perk Yeoman Valley, was a Swiss redemptioner. Hmm, interesting. That's really pretty. I sometimes really wonder how people got all the way up here. Because you figure if you're coming through this area to come in here in 1729, because they didn't settle Pennsylvania until the 16, late, well, mid 1600s, maybe late 1600s, starting in Philadelphia, obviously making their way up. Obviously, you know, they also followed the Delaware as well too, which was waterways are probably your earliest modes of transportation. But they call Pennsylvania, the Sylvania means woods. So this was completely wooded, much more so than it is now. In fact, the wood was so prized um, that it was called the King's Wood. You weren't allowed to take down this wood. Uh, they used this for lots of construction over in England. They used this for warships. So over the years, a lot of the woods have been replaced. But that being said, it is still all woods. and. Uh, not just woods but brush like this so not a lot of easy areas to get through unless you have trails which of course there were some from the indians who lived in this area oh if you look up there can you see it there is a great herring flying across Lots of wildlife here. I've seen deer, raccoons. There was a bear up here not that long ago, but they usually relocate the bears from this area. Um, for their own good. And so much fowl. It's crazy. This is actually a nice park to, this is actually a great park to come to during the winter as well too. Just beautiful. So this is the second drop off on the, and the first stop on the red trail. Just a parking lot here on the other side of the bridge. So you can access this from either side actually. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna cut through and we're eventually gonna make a right and then a left as we head on. So at this point, this diverges from the road and we are going to cut right. There goes a cardinal. I guess it's probably kind of appropriate you see a cardinal on the red trail. And this will basically take you up closer along the reservoir. Some parts of this hike do get a little sloppy. The red trail itself is actually pretty good, but there are parts, especially on the blue trail, that can get a little, a little mushy, but for the most part, it's pretty good. That being said, I probably, you, I mean, you can wear sneakers, but you're probably gonna wear something that's uh, like at least a light boot, I would say. These often are some of my favorite areas where we hike through where there's really just not a lot here. It's very quiet. Just gives you time to, re to relax and re reflect. I read some kind of quote. I forget when it was. It was probably just a couple weeks ago, actually. And it said, a person, I'm gonna paraphrase, I don't remember exactly what it said, but 
it basically said, you know, someone was asked, why do they always, like, it was a person, a hiker was asked, why do they head out and get out into the forests and trails and outdoors to hike and relax? Why, why do they need that break from everyday life? And the response is, well, the way she viewed it, I think it was a she, is that this actually is the real life. This is the real world that's around us that we don't look at. And what we've created is something different. That it's apart from nature and apart from our own roots. You think of our 250,000 years of modern man on this earth, this is primarily what it was. It wasn't until recently that we had civilization and towns and cities, taxes and politics and everything else. I think that's a good way to look at it. And as you can see, this is, you are pretty exposed out here on this trail. So just keep that in mind. As I mentioned, make sure you're wearing your sunscreen or some type of protection. First time I came through here, I wasn't fully protected and boy, did I get burned. And it'll dehydrate you too, obviously. The more sun, whether you're wearing clothes or not, it's gonna dehydrate you more, so make sure you pack a little extra water. There's not a lot of water stops on this trail. Obviously, even though you're along the reservoir. The other, there are a couple spots where you could probably get some water out of some creeks, but nothing on this side, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. So if you note the shadows too, um, the best time to hit this part of the trail is obviously gonna be the morning or towards the latter part of the day. If you come here, if you're hiking this section along noon, oh, you're gonna dehydrate so quick. Because needless to say, you are, as you can see this trail, it's pretty wide open here and you will bake. Um, so my suggestion is to start this early in the morning or later in the day, or at least make sure you plan these sections for that. The rest of the trail is relatively covered, just mostly this stretch here along the red trail is very much exposed at noon. So just keep that in mind and plan accordingly. And there are times here too where you will see a lot, well, as you see, there's a lot of wildlife here, a lot of birds, a lot of different types of birds too. Um, there are deer, which you'll sporadically see here is too. We haven't seen any yet, but there is that possibility. Got some songbirds up there singing away. Just a beautiful, beautiful park. They do encourage you to stay on the trail, while the reservoir and a lot of the natural areas here are part of the park. It is in a rural suburban neighborhood, so if you go too far off, you're gonna end up in somebody's backyard probably. So just keep that in mind. Now further ahead, we're gonna to come to one of my favorite areas, which is a maintenance station with a nice little orchard and a creek. So stay tuned for that, we're, that's coming up pretty soon.
So as promised, there is a small creek crossing. As you can see, there is the maintenance shed over there. Now, if you are coming through here and you want to skip the section we just went through, you can actually bypass a lot of it just by following that road right up there. And that'll hook you back up to the bridge. Now, this little damn walkway, this was not always here. We used to actually have to wade through the creek back in the olden days which obviously is a lot deeper now, so. It's a, like, it's, a, it's a tiny little creek, it's not something huge, so. We've gone through much deeper on some trails and much wider. Hold up, buddy. I always get nervous on rocks. Not sure why. There we go. Look at that, man, you didn't even have to go through the creek. That's a first, it must be relatively new. There's a nice little lake up here. It's kind of hidden within this. I don't know if this actually connects to the reservoir or not. I, I want to say it doesn't, but it probably does at some point. But it's a really nice area. These trees, they recently planted these. I guess it's not an orchard. It's just a bunch of young trees. So. Just beautiful park. Now we're gonna follow this. This is gonna take us up um, through some more fields. Then we're gonna cut across uh, Knight's Road, which is what we're trailing now. And at that point, we are going to um, head into horse territory. Who knows, we're gonna get lucky and see a horseback rider. We shall see. All right, as promised, here's some evidence of horses. And we cut back further into the woods again. It's just a short stint through the woods. This is gonna take us out into a field. Oh, and you know, I did double check that lake actually is, um, does reach back out to the reservoir. For some reason, I always thought that was its own separate lake. Uh, I guess I just never noticed it creep back. We had some bikers come through earlier. I don't know if you noticed that. Like I said, this is traffic, but it's not heavily traffic. And this is a, a high season. I think Saturdays tend to be the busiest on this trail, as well as Saturdays, or Sundays, I mean. But I think that's every park, isn't it? Nice thing about this trail is a lot of this trail is relatively easy. The red part is. Um, so if you are, if you have some issues with mobility, uh, this is actually a pretty decent trail for you. There's not too many areas you would struggle with, I think. Nor, at least on this stretch, there's not a lot of steep inclines either. There are later but at least not this section. Now the blue trail, whole other matter. Like I said, blue trail is definitely much more difficult. So just keep that in mind. Now I believe this is a splinter trail here. If you take this yellow trail, this will cut back along the creek where the red trail is the main part of the trail. There are a lot of splinter trails off of here. So keep that in mind. But as I mentioned, these obviously are really well marked. So. And color coordinated, of course. So look back at the red trail we just came from. 
All right, and off we go. All right, so we are still continuing on the red trail here and we passed the exit of the honeysuckle trail which is with that which is that yellow path we saw earlier so if you do want to take that route that takes you into the the woods that's a little actually a little bit more difficult um, for this we're just going to focus on the red trail and i think i mentioned that there's a crossover which is going to happen right up here we come back down to Knights Road and then we're going to cross over because um, there is a outreach from the reservoir and a small little bridge that you end up traveling on. And as you can see, it's, uh, oh, it's probably around 9, 30, 10 and we are already getting exposed out here and it's a warm one today. So, let's keep that in mind. My shoelace, I don't know what is going on. My shoelace keeps, keeps on getting untied. Crazy. I think this is like the fifth time I've had to tie it. I'm not sure if what's going on there. So we're gonna have to take a shoe tying break. Probably right before we cross over here. And at this point, you can see the road up ahead and the crossing. There is a, another herring. All right. Probably looking for his lunch. Ooh, these warm days are tough on Mav being a husky. That being said, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend having a husky if you're in extremely arid climates, but they actually do pretty well with warm weather. One thing I learned with huskies is that you definitely do not want to shave them in the summer. Their fur coat actually helps them cool down in the summer times. Because even though they are Siberian Huskies, it does get warm in the summertime in, in parts of Siberia, especially where they were, which is a lot of times along the coastline. Not super warm, but definitely warm. 80s, maybe 90s wasn't unheard of. Now, of course, once you get into the interior tundra, that's a whole other matter. Hence why they're a thicker coat. Huskies are an interesting breed. They're one of the oldest breeds of dog. They um, obviously come from Siberia. Come on, buddy. Go ahead. Go ahead. And... Uh, my understanding is that during the winter months, they would live with the local tribes in Siberia. 
living their natural and nomadic life. And in the summer months, they would release their huskies to go live on their own for a few months and fend for themselves. Obviously they stayed close, but they weren't kept working during the summer. So they spend their summers hunting and fishing and living the life of Riley. They were brought over into the US and North America in, I think it was 1903. Obviously some before that, but, um, but specifically they were brought over for dog sled pulling. And when they were brought over, they're about half the size of a Malibu. Appreciate that, man. I guess that's his response to the Malibu. <laughs> um, but basically, uh, people laughed at them at first. In fact, I think they actually called them Russian rats when they came over because they were so small. But what they didn't realize is uh, even though they're a lighter frame dog than a Malamute, they have just about all the power. They're powerful little guys. Mav himself, usually he's a lighter husky. Uh, he ranges anywhere from about 45 to 50 pounds in that range which is toward the light end. I think the average is about 55. I think he looks bigger than he is just because of his fur coat. And if you ever see the fluffy variety, they look even bigger. But underneath all that fur, they are not bulky dogs, which makes sense. I mean, these dogs are designed to go 20, 25 miles a day pulling sleds, right? And if you're gonna do that, you can't have a big stocky dog. So they're natural runners and pullers. Obviously not to the extent of like a greyhound. But, uh, yep. And great hiking dogs. For a lot of reasons. Oh, now I mentioned that there is a horse, horses come along here. These are horse jumps along here. There's actually usually a couple of these. There's only one of these here right now. I mean, I assume that's what these are. And we're gonna follow this, it's gonna loop back. And this is actually the one of the two horse drop-offs that we're gonna come to next. I don't know if you can see that over there, but there's some more horse jumps as well. You can take if you're horsebacking. And we continue on. Puppy, huh? Yeah. 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 Anything. Anything. Very awesome. So there was our first horse. Maverick is always fascinated by these. And he was just a tiny puppy. Um, I think he was seven months old. We were on a hike through uh, Tyler State Park down in Newtown, Pennsylvania. And uh, we came across, uh, I guess like a horse farm off the trail. <laughs> of course, like a pup, he just runs right up to the horse, says hi, 
Well, fortunately, I guess the horse knew he was a puppy, so he just uh, didn't do anything. He just looked at him and said hi back. Whew, it was a little scary, but... No, I imagine most horses are probably, I mean, I have no experience with the horses, but I'd imagine most are probably okay with uh, pups as long as they're not aggressive. Uh, because obviously for years and years they went hand in hand. And we're finishing up the last part of this loop on and off of uh, Knight's Road. Or I think it's actually might be Knight. Yeah, it's either Knight or Knight's. I think it actually is Knight's Road. Either way, it's still a night. There's a dirty little creek. I can't emphasize enough that this is a great park to come hiking in in the winter. For the most part, the trails you can see they're pretty wide, which makes navigating them in winter much easier, not to mention the fact they're very well marked. So that's one of the dangers of winter hiking is it is easy to get turned around or lost when you're hiking, especially if you're the first set of tracks on the snow. And depending on the type of trail, you don't always know what you're stepping on. Whereas a trail like this is pretty secure, you know you're probably either walking on gravel or, or grass. I think one of the trickiest and one of my favorite ones I've done in the winter is um, Merle Creek. And I was the first trekking through part of it the one time and uh, I was walking what I thought was the trail. And then suddenly went whoop and it turns out there's a tiny little creek below me and i sunk straight down pulled myself back up of course but uh just never know nope here comes another horse as i mentioned this is one of the two horse drop offs and launches here nope, two horses three oh boy Morning. Morning. All right, well, this is an out and back hike. And we're about halfway through the red trail. Let's take a quick look at the map. So if you see, we started out here. Uh, yep, right here. We hiked up along the red, pulled along here. And as you can see, the Honeysuckle goes right around. We just launched through here and we are here right now. There's a tiny little bit here on the red trail, which we may or may not do. We'll have to see how that goes. So we'll probably go ahead and just take a break here real quick. And then we're gonna head back. Now you can make this into a loop. Um, if, I, if you are gonna do a loop, the way I recommend you go is starting at the blue, working your way around this way then taking the Perkyoman Trail to the Connector Trail, 
and then over to the red trail and back. It's a pretty arduous hike. Definitely a lot of fun. Um, it's going to take you, well, depending how quick you are as a hiker, probably a good part of the day. So, but this stretch right here is definitely the most difficult. Um, the most, if you're just looking for a very light hike, actually the Perky Yeoman Trail that runs along here is actually a really nice hike as well too. Um, definitely recommend that. Now the connector, ooh, this is almost a straight incline here, especially this part right here. So that definitely is more difficult. So, so we'll go ahead and take a quick break over in the park over there. So we can get Maverick something to drink. And we're going to pick up and finish up the red trail. All right, we finished up our break and we are going to head back up. Basically, you head this way, it's going to cut right and it's going to start banking in and out, in and out a little bit over there, up along the creek. And then that finishes up the red trail. Probably about two thirds of the way through so far. So let's get going. Now we're heading back into the wooded areas of the Red Trail. You know, some type of little bird up here. Just chirping away. This is actually one of the nicest parts of the Red Trail. And this is probably, as far as hiking goes, this is still easy in my opinion, but it's more along the lines of easy slash moderate. You can see we're off of gravel now. We're just on a, uh, I mean, there's some old gravel, but mostly just a dirt path. We've been catching some breaks with some clouds coming through, which has been nice. Still hot and sunny though today. I think it's supposed to be in the mid eighties today. And in Pennsylvania, we get muggy. We don't get Florida muggy, but we definitely get muggy, I'll tell you that. Yeesh. And the bugs are out. Got gnats everywhere. Got my bug spray, but that only lasts for so long. Sure is beautiful here. You smell something good there? And you can see this is going to take us down closer to the reservoir. I'm going to turn this down as we start heading or descending. Maverick, let's go nice and easy, okay? Don't pull me down the hill. He always wants to pull me down. Ah, 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 slow down. I think that's the only uh, downside of a husky is that, well, they were meant for pulling, right? So they will try and pull you. He's like, come on, Dad, you're too slow. I can go so much faster than this. Don't ask me why Maverick talks with this type of an accent. It just is always what he has done. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, and we're down to the reservoir. It's not that much of a vertical. Tiny vertical. The blue does definitely have verticals. and open it up to the reservoir. Look at that path. Isn't that pretty? <sighs> 
This is nice. These are always the best part of the trails. Well, onward and upward. It is so beautiful here. And that is part of the blue trail over there. I can see it. You probably can't too much from here though, at least not on the video. Um, but it circles back, kind of goes up and down those ridges over there on the other side of the uh, reservoir. Basically mirrors this trail on the other side. But that side definitely is the more difficult of the two. I think there's camping over there as well too. Look that up, but I think there is camping if you are into camping, of course. All right, on we go. Now, if I remember correctly, I think we head up over here. There might be a tiny little bridge we have to cross, but I could be wrong. And again, this is where the red trail gets a little bit more difficult, so you do have disability issues, this is probably not the part of the trail for you. You can actually, there is a connector you can take that bypasses this part and does make it more accessible. This is actually a rarity here in Pennsylvania is a dirt trail. I feel like half of our trails are just mostly rocks. Oh, in case you're ever wondering what that jingling is, uh, it's just some carabiners I have. I noticed that they would jingle early on and it bothered me, but it actually, the more I thought about it, the more I like the idea. Is kind of lets the wildlife know that we're coming. So if it's wildlife that doesn't want to see us like a bear, it knows, uh, at least we don't surprise it, which is the most important part. All right, so as I promised, here is the bridge. Um, this, the other side of this bridge marks the end of the Red Trail here in Green Lane Park. And it reaches the connector and then the Perky Omen. We're gonna stop at the Red Trail here. So this is gonna pretty much bring a finish to our hike here. 
Let me take one quick last overlook here from the bridge. Can't recommend this park enough. This is just a, such a nice park. There's actually a really nice area as well too for picnics. Um, great trails, all in all. Really well kept as well too, which is nice. Uh, this is one of the nicest parks in Montgomery County. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed our hike here of the Red Trail in Green Lane Park. If you did, please click like and subscribe for future content. It really does help out the channel. And we look forward to seeing you in future videos. We try to post as often as we can. And um, until we see you in our next video, get out there, make your own great outdoor adventures. And as always, take care.